Opinion Nation, will a memorial to addicts help solve the opioid crisis? It's an exhibit like no other. How to explain? Well, it sort of reminds me of the Vietnam Wall in D.C. Simple, powerful, the names of our fallen heroes carved in black granite. So moving, right? I'm sure you visited there. Well, this opioid wall is also simple, but it's an ode to 22,000 addicts who overdosed on opioids. Their faces carved into tiny little pills mounted on the wall. Every one of those little pills represent a person that we lost. My son got addicted at the age of 18. Somebody prescribed him a medication. None of us knew the consequences. I lost my son Louis at age 24. He started with pain medication. I thought because a doctor prescribed them that the doctor knew what he was doing. He didn't even see the progression of it coming so quickly. It caught him off guard. I get overwhelmed every time I see the wall because I was really close to being on this wall myself. This is a traveling exhibit. It's called Prescribed to Death. It's the brainchild of the National Safety Council. It'll be displayed in a park near the White House next month. President Trump tweeting this about it. Quote, I'm very pleased to welcome the opioid memorial to the President's Park in April. I encourage all to visit and remember those who we have lost to this deadly epidemic. We will keep fighting until we defeat the opioid crisis. I want to like this exhibit. I really do. But what's the point? I know there's an opioid crisis, and I know it won't be solved by memorials. So Opinion Nation, will a memorial to addicts help solve the opioid crisis? Let's talk about this. Peter Vincent is a former senior official with the Department of Justice. Ryan Hampton is a national recovery advocate and author of the upcoming book, American Fix, Inside the Opioid Addiction Crisis and How to End It. And Dr. Reef Kareem is a psychiatrist and addiction specialist. Welcome to all of you. Um, Peter, I want to start with you. Your, just your initial impression of this exhibit. Carol, to be honest, as I always am with you and your uh, very, very many wonderful viewers, when I first learned of this opioid memorial, I thought it was a bit, uh, to be honest, and with all due respect to the victims and their families, and not to minimize the, the depth of the, the damage caused by the opioid epidemic, I thought it was a kooky, uh, goofy, um, somewhat hokey idea, in that it fails to capture the full scope of the opioid e epidemic and only focuses on those individuals that have tragically lost their lives as a direct result of prescription painkillers and doesn't capture the many other individuals that were hooked uh, on drugs by prescription painkillers but then look to alternative methods to remain high such as heroin. So I worry that although it does something to increase public awareness and I give the Trump administration credit and I commend them for increasing public awareness, I worry that the unattended consequence of this memorial will be to create more uh, division and less unity at a time and on a subject where we should be very, very focused as individuals and collectively as a nation to engage in very, very bold, aggressive, and indeed radical measures to confront this problem. Although this is well, a creative and artistic solution, I worry that it's a distraction. Ryan, this wall is meant to show just how many people die every year in the opioid crisis and to demonstrate to, to Americans who see this exhibit um, that this crisis is big and we all have a part in this fight. Does it at least do that? Listen, I was at the White House last week, and there's still a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done uh, to educate this White House. There's still a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done to break down these cultural barriers of shame and stigma that still exist in the United States. With that being said, any time that we are able to raise awareness about the addiction crisis in the United States without those three really ineffective words, just say no, uh, it is a good day. Uh, the families they deserve this moment in time. The people we have lost to this crisis, they deserve to be memorialized. 
But we need to follow this with action. We have to turn this grief into action. We have to advocate for sensible policy. Some of the policy coming out of this well, White we're House. We're going to get to the policy in just yep. a second. So I want to mm -hmm. focus on the wall first. But I, sure. but I get you. So so doctor, I want to ask you this question mm -hmm. because one of the things that bothered me about it, you know, I covered the crack epidemic at its height, and I'm covering the opioid crisis now. Um, there are very detrimental terms for people addicted to crack back in the day. They were called crackheads, right? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine a memorial to them. And, and, and in my mind, you know, there were drug dealers who preyed on young people and got them addicted to crack. Mm -hmm. So to separate out, you know, along the lines of what Peter was saying, to separate them out, you know, um, certain drug addicts from others with a memorial, it just seems painful for those people who have lost their kids to crack addiction or alcohol addiction mm -hmm. or... Yeah, which which addict gets to be chosen for the wall? I mean, it, I get I get the understand. I, I understand why the wall is there. It's there for awareness. It's there to humanize the problem, and it's it's not. It, it, there is a very specific reason why it looks like the Vietnam Wall. If you look at the past year in 2016, we lost over 64,000 people to fatal overdoses that year uh, from opiates, from prescription narcotics. More than Vietnam, which was 58,000. So this was a bigger problem than the Vietnam War in one year. Granted. So I get why they're doing it, but I agree with everybody else. I mean, it, this is a, it, with all due respect, it's a distraction. And it seems like this administration likes to do, have symbols and walls and all sorts of other things to distract us from what we really need, okay. which is a lot of work, which we can go into. Okay, well, we're going to go into that. And Peter, I'm going to pose this question to you because, um, you know, the thing that I hear loudest from the administration is punishment, right? We want to give drug dealers the death penalty, right? We want to give drug users stiffer sentences, and that's coming out of the Attorney General's office. So there's that part of it. And now this, this wall, this very caring gesture, and it just doesn't seem to fit cohesively in my mind. Carol, it doesn't in mind either. I was involved uh, in the global war on drugs, and I am now fully uh, of the belief that we cannot arrest, prosecute, incarcerate, let alone execute, that is, kill our way out of this particular issue. When I was in Colombia, I had the distinct honor and privilege at the U.S. Embassy there to work with a drug uh, enforcement.